welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to have some fun working with balloons to improve your bassoon playing. Now I like to work with balloons largely because I have found that it can help with basic tone colors, intonation on the bassoon, extending the life of your embouchure, and also just recently I found that many students do well with the beginning stages of vibrato by working with balloons. So let's do a little bit about choosing a balloon and the importance of your balloon choice. I have found that smaller balloons can oftentimes be more resistant than larger balloons. And just like you wouldn't want to play an overly resistant reed, you should be careful in choosing a larger balloon rather than a smaller balloon so that you have the best ability for success in learning the elements that we're talking about here today. I've also found that as an educator, working with balloons and students is one of the best ways to remind everybody to keep breathing as well as be interactive in the lessons. I start out by having a bucket of balloons and what I do is I set the bucket of balloons in front of the student and let them choose their color. By doing this, I found that students immediately start to smile and they remember all of the elements that balloons have played in their life, from birthday parties and balloon animals to New Year's Eve where they drop the balloons on midnight. So let's dig into how working with balloons can increase your tone colors when playing bassoon. Now I have found that oftentimes if a student isn't demonstrating the tone colors, it's largely because they are not breathing. This oftentimes happens when they're thinking. Overly thinking about one key element can oftentimes stop a person from breathing as low and deep as they naturally would. So this will perk up usually in the sight reading or possibly if they're learning a new skill like flicking or venting. When these moments happen, they start to realize that they aren't sounding as good as they want to and they start to feel a little bit disarmed. The balloons bring that happiness back and it also gets them breathing. It gives them a visual awareness of what the breath is doing and breathing deep enough to make sure that you're getting the tone colors that you need. Another way that I like to use the balloons is to help with intonation. Oftentimes I've suggested working with a pinwheel in order to see the air. The balloon also works as a visualization for what your air is doing. So as always, for the higher notes on bassoon, you need to use faster air, and for the lower notes on bassoon, you need to use slower air. The balloon gives you a visual representation of this. Now, as a teacher, I like to actually do this with students so that they get a demonstration as well as a participation at the same time. This also is a little bit exciting because sometimes we'll do balloon races to see who can blow up the balloon faster. So let's go ahead and dig in. I have chosen my trusty balloon. And what I like to do is make sure that it is stretched out. This is in large part because just as you don't want that resistant reed, you don't want a resistant balloon. So we start off on a good foot. From there, we're going to go ahead and start off with fast air. I like starting off with fast air because it gets everyone breathing low and deep from the very get-go. So fast air. Gives me that windblown look, doesn't it? I have learned also from bassoon etiquette of doing bassoon races with balloons and my students that this is, this is cheating. In order to do the race, you need to get all of that air out of the balloon before you continue on. Because if you race three times in a row for the best two out of three, and there is still air in the balloon, you're cheating. Oh no! So there is fast air. Let's go ahead and do slow air. And this is a good indication of what the air looks like for the low notes below the staff on the bassoon. Again, the release of the air. No cheating happening here today. Take a look at yourself in the mirror as you're doing this exercise. 
Oftentimes it's easy to start puffing the cheeks and as you start puffing the cheeks you lose that air pressure coming from the lower belly. Instead you're using the air from here. This is not circular breathing. That's another video at a future date probably, but let's just keep it honest and keep it moving into the belly. I find that by using lower deeper belly breaths we are going to have better tone colors and also intonation. Let's talk about how this can fix the embouchure. I have found with students that are not breathing low and deep and they aren't changing their airspeed for fast and slow air, oftentimes their embouchure will give out very quickly. In fact, making it through a 30 minute lesson can be a bit of a challenge. By using the balloon to demonstrate the airspeed shifts, as well as to make sure they're breathing low and deep, they don't have to use as much embouchure support. By releasing the lower jaw so that it's not too tight, they'll actually increase the longevity of their embouchure, but they will also make sure that you're getting those tone colors and the richness. Sometimes if the lower jaw is too tight and the embouchure is also pinching, it can create a brighter sound. So I find that this also helps darken the sound. I've also seen that it can help out a little bit with vibrato. What I found for beginners that just start to do vibrato, sometimes they will do a bit of almost like hyperventilation where they do out and in with a little pulses of vibrato of and that can be problematic because then they're getting an intake instead of just out, out, out. I suggest starting with a bit of air in the balloon in large part to get through that resistant portion of the balloon, which I like to call the balloon vocal because it's the straight neck portion, so that then the air pulses happen after the resistance has started. So what we do is blow a little bit and then do air pulses. By doing the air pulses outwards in a visual form, they can make sure that they're not getting any intake of air, but that it's just out, 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 and that they're getting the pulsations low and deep enough, and it's not from the throat or the jaw. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this balloon bassoon tutorial. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any of my future videos, be sure to click that subscribe button. And if you want to keep up on all my bassoon adventures, there's always Instagram and Twitter. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!